All right, well, welcome to uh, <laughs> Brad's Turkey Cleaning Station again. Um, I went through how I cut the legs and the breasts off a of turkey, which I don't often do. I've done plenty of, I think, videos in the past where I literally skin the turkey, which is what I normally do. But today I'm going to pluck my turkey. I killed a great big 22-pound gobbler this morning, and uh, <clears throat> I'm going to pluck him for Thanksgiving. We can either deep fry him which I've never done, uh, my brother does that, or roast him in the oven, which we normally do even with skin turkey, but we're gonna, I'm going to pluck this one today, so I'm going to walk you through the basic steps of how, how we're going to do that. So I've got water boiling on the stove, I've got the ice machine running, and I've got some ice and some ice blocks and a five gallon, clean five-gallon bucket at the house. I've got my Yeti cooler out here. I've got my turkey laying here. I haven't done anything with him yet. I'm going to pop his beard and... Uh, Start uh, start working on him and try to show you uh, how I do that real quick. Little short steps. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this bird's beard like I did the other day. So you just grab at the base, grab around the base, and then I'm just going to pull, pop right out. There it is. And uh, Nine and three quarter. He's got some long hairs. I might get ten inches out of it. We'll check it here in a minute. That's the beard. Now, do things a little bit different. I'm going to take his tail fan off right now. Tight toe, replaceable blade knife, which I'm going to use here. So what you do is, I showed the other day. I think I zoomed in where you find the turkey's vent, the, the vent on his tail. And one thing I didn't really point out is if you reach in there you'll find a soft spot a turkey can turn his tail he can articulate it all the way around whatever wherever the hen's at he switches his tail to and uh, there makes a soft spot where there's no bone and uh, if you find that soft spot above the vent that's where that's where you want to cut and I'm going to do that right here and like I said then you just grab kind of as many feathers as you want, what you think you want. I don't think I'm going to do anything with this bird's fan, although it's big and beautiful, barred feathers. And uh, just come right through that soft spot right there and, uh, and get as many feathers as you want. Cut through all those feathers. There's a tail fan. Big, beautiful tail fan. So set that aside. What I'm going to do different now is I'm not going to take his legs off like I did the other day because I need his legs and I need his head for handles um, if we're going to pluck this turkey. Here in my shop, which is a mess, uh, what I've done is I've just made my own little turkey hanger out of a gamble. I, I made, took some, tied some loops, tied them through the gambrel, and there's where the turkey's legs will go through so that I can pluck him. And uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, bring him over and hang him up by his legs and, uh, and then deal with his wings and get him ready for scalding him to uh, remove the feathers. The first turkey that I ever killed was a hen killed her when I was in college in the fall and I didn't know how to clean the turkey and I'd read where you scald them and that's what we're going to do here you scald them to uh, pluck them he's there so. all right so see how he's hanging here I got those two ropes on the gambrel and then uh, they hold each leg and then of course I've got electric hoist in my shop I hang here and position where I want him and now I can work on these wings so kind of like your arm has three joints you have a shoulder an elbow and a wrist the turkey's wing has three joints that's what I always call the shoulder and then yes you call it an elbow and a wrist but so normally I'm taking a turkey um, taking his wing off at what would be his elbow, but when I'm going to pluck him, we're going to take him off down here at his last joint, his third joint on his wing. So you can see him, you got the shoulder here, and you've got the elbow, and then what would be like the wrist. These are his primary 
flight feathers right here that come from the wrist forward, these, these big feathers right here that you fletch an arrow with. So pause this, get my knife, and we'll cut that off and go from there. I don't know how well I'm trying to self-film this. It's nearly impossible, but try to zoom in a little bit. Maybe I can show you what I'm doing, maybe not. You'll get the idea. You'll figure it out. But uh, it's, uh, come right down here to this joint. Cut him right here. Like I said, if what would be his wrist. And then I'm going to break it right there in that joint. I'm just going to snap it. I hope you can see that where it snapped. So you can see where I've got that broke right there. I broke that wrist. Now I'm just taking take that off. There's that. That's you get these primary, these primary wings, which you know on this bird are completely strutted down to nothing. So take that over there. The other thing I'll point out. So the other thing is what I'll be doing is with the gambrel, you got these the hooks that normally go through the hawks on the deer's leg. I'll hang a garbage bag there, and then I can uh, put all these feathers when I start plucking this bird uh, in that. Uh, in that, but I'm going to did this other. I'm going to break this other wing at the joint, right here, just like I did the last one. Take it right here, just cut it. That joint right there, and score it there, and then I will break it. Right there, and then I'll take it off like I did the other one. strutted down there. Alright, so that's where we want to be right now. Now I'm going to pull these secondary feathers off this wing um, before I scald him. And uh, so you just grab them and pull them down. And uh, they're a little bit tough. This bird's been dead for a while, so it's not going to be as easy. all then let me finish this one there we've got all the primary and secondary wing feathers off uh, off our bird so now he's ready for scalding I have not gutted this turkey don't want to gut him if I'm going to scald him so uh, we'll scald him for like a minute and a half and then uh, I'll kind of whoosh him around in the cooler. You'll see what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to film all that. And then uh, we'll use these legs and his head, his handles, to pick him in and up, in and out of the cooler. So I'm going to pause this and take him over to the cooler and then go check on my water, which is boiling in the house. All right, so there's my turkey with his wings removed. And uh, took him off the hanger. And I've got him sitting here next to my cooler. It's a 65-quart Yeti, which is about the perfect size for this. So I'm going to go to the house and I'm going to get the, I've got three pots of boiling water. I'm going to dump them into a big five gallon bucket and you want about 20 quarts or more of water depending on how big your bird is. And, uh, and then we're going to dump that down in here on the turkey. So first I'm going to put the turkey in the cooler. Hopefully I can film that. And uh, I'm going to have to bend his legs to get him to fit down in there. But he should fit okay. Best I can here. This is a big old gobbler too. Get him down in there. I've got to bend his legs down. There we go. And there you can see that's a 
big that's a 22 pound wild turkey all right that's a 22 pound wild turkey and he fits just about perfect he's a little big for that 65 quart yeti and we're going to put uh, 20 quarts of boiling water in there on him for a minute and a half and then hopefully he's going to pluck pretty easy probably not with uh you know me trying to film this it's probably gonna be a disaster but we'll give it a shot and we're gonna do it anyway one way or another he's gonna get plucked five gallons of boiling hot water in this yeti bucket that i boiled on three different pots on the stove at least it's bringing me a little bit more all right so what we're going to do is we're going to add all this into this cooler where the turkey is and we're going to do a little whirlpool action on it. This is very hot. So, very hot. Ouch. Slaps on my foot. Alright, so. If you can see that or not. And now I'm going to close the lid. Give me a minute and a half. I got least some time, a minute and a half. I'm gonna just rock this back and forth and get that turkey good and scalded. Watch that hot water leaks out even on a Yeti cooler. So. Tell me when you get to a minute, okay? Alright, tell me when you get to a minute and a half. Minute and a half. Okay, so it's been a minute and a half. So now I'm going to pop him out of there and take him over there and hang him up. I'm going to use his legs. Yeah. Alright, so I got him hanging up back on my hanger, and now I'm just pulling the feathers, uh, call it upstream, pulling the feathers upstream to uh, get them off the turkey. And after a minute and a half in scalding water, they should come off pretty easy. So, which is what you're seeing here. Not too bad. Of course, some wings are a kicker. But we're going to get all these feathers off. Now I've got the bag hanging here, you see on my gambrel how I do that so that it's, uh... oh I just ripped the skin right there. So if you rip the skin, it may have been in the water just a little bit too long, which kind of surprises me is this bird being dead for shotting 10 o'clock this morning and it's like 4 o'clock in the afternoon now, it's 5, 5.30 actually, so it's been a while. Anyway, but you see how much easier the feathers come off if you scald them. And they don't come off your hand, they just come off the bird. You get these wings, and you can see that joint I was talking about earlier. Get these wing feathers off. Now if you live in the city, I don't know how you do this, okay, I'm just saying. When you live in the country, you got a shop and room to work. You can make a mess. Now the one thing you always got to be cautious of when you're scalding the turkey is that's why I asked Lisa to time him for me because it's easy to leave them in too long and forget about them or anything like that and you'll cook them actually and that is you do not want to cook this bird at all. So I'd say no more than a minute and a half and I figured I needed a full minute and a half as long as he's been dead to get all his feathers off of him. I don't, I wanted to time how long it takes me to do this, but I've got too much to do trying to film and <laughs> take care of the bird. And I've got, I've got water, I've got an ice bath working in the house in the sink. So, What, what you're basically doing when you scald a turkey is all these feathers are held into their, into their holes 
slots. I don't know what the biological name for it is, but they have fat, and there's like fatty material and grease that's in there, and that stuff is sticky. It's like glue. And when you scald the turkey, you loosen that glue or that fat up, and it makes the feathers come out so much easier. Plus, the other nice thing is, is they're wet, so they're not floating all over the place like they are when they're dry. Now, these, these birds up here in Virginia and further north, these turkeys have some pretty hard winters. It's still winter here. And, uh, and so they have a lot more down in their feathers than Osceola's. When I clean an Osceola turkey, he doesn't have near the down that this, this bird does. But, so I'm just saying, who cares? Useless information, I guess. But Yeah, it's not useless when you're plucking them. You see, he's come along pretty good right now. It's just a lot of work to get ready. It's not, the work isn't so much plucking, the work is getting the water ready and the ice bath ready and all that. And now the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the turkey when I get done here. And by that I mean gut him. And uh, get him gutted. Because I haven't gutted him yet. Because I don't want to gut them when I pluck them because you know, you're cooking them. You put them in that scalding water, you're cooking the inside. So it may seem gross that I haven't gutted this turkey since I killed him. But knowing that I might pluck him, I did not want this bird gutted for the very reason that I just stated. So he's going to come along pretty good here. I was worried. I didn't know if a minute and a half was going to do it. And I didn't want to go any longer than that. It looks like a minute and a half was perfect. So I'm going to clean my hands off and then I'll really be able to clean him up good. Okay, so there he is. He's been plucked. I'm going to ice bath him. One thing i point out, um, this turkey uh, shot with a shotgun and uh, he was going away from me and I aimed at his head and I see a couple pellets there in the top. I can't, the sun is messing with me. A couple pellets on the top of his neck, but his whole head, if you look at his waddles, it's blue in there from all the blood, which uh, from his, where I haven't plucked or skinned. But uh, he's in good shape now. Something I do with ducks is, it's called singeing them. Usually I use a candle, but there's a little, they're like little hairs sometimes. And, uh, and I learned this doing ducks, but uh, you just take a flame. Usually I just use a candle. And you just singe those little little hairs that are on there and uh, they're, not, they're just uh, they're, you can't see them. you guys can't see them in the camera I can see them because of the sunlight coming through the window right there helps me see them and they just basically as soon as the flame hits them they just burn right up and I've got a few more feathers to pick but I want to get him ice bath ASAP all right there's our plucked turkey Get him in the ice bath. Go ahead and shine right, shine that thing right down in from the top. See that? That's why he's dead right there. It's a big block of ice right in the bottom. Mm. It's all right. It'll work. I'm going to leave him in there about 15 minutes. I'm going to try to switch that ice around. Pick him up and move him out of here now. That's why I get him kind of, kind of like blanching him. That block of ice out there. There we go. All right, get out in there. There we go. That's, got that? Yep. So that's what you want to do now. You want to get him in there and, uh, I'm going to leave him for at least 15 minutes or so, and uh, it's 6 o'clock, so leave him in there for 15 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and take his legs off right now at this point while he's cooling, and then I will uh, draw him. I'll gut him, and then dry him out on the inside, and dry him off on the outside, and then we'll vacuum seal him, and that's Thanksgiving, right babe? Yep. That's Thanksgiving dinner right there. It's a 22-pound eastern wild gobbler with very little shot in the body, if any, and uh, usually we use a bow-killed turkey, but we're going to use this one. So, all right, so I'll uh, 
The other thing I got to mention is after I take the legs off, not only do I got to draw him, but I take his crawl out. I'll show that because it's important. Um, <clears throat> the crawl is like a balloon that sits right here between the breast muscles, and you got to get that out before you freeze him, and it'll be full of whatever he's been eating. And uh, so if he's been eating anything, this gobbler was with hens, so May the 2nd. So, all right, that's good. Well, hopefully that uh, gets us that far anyway. All right, it's been 10 minutes. I got all the feathers cleaned up where I hung my bird. It's good to have a shop vac. Um, after you pick up everything, there's where I pulled everything, and there's no feathers there, just wet. There's my hanger for my turkey to uh, finish chilling. You see, I took his legs off there at the joint, just like I did the other day, and I've already cut them up and got the spurs off of them. You know, the spur off of them. There they are. And uh, come back online to uh, show you how I remove the craw and uh, draw the turkey. And then uh, I probably won't show you drawing the turkey. We'll just let you figure that out on your own. And uh, then I'll uh, dry him out good and uh, go take him to the house. Maybe get a picture of him all nice and clean from Lisa. And then uh, we'll. Uh, Put him in my big, I have these great big vacuum seal bags that I get from Food Saver that'll hold a whole wild turkey. And I'll put him in one of them, we'll vacuum seal him and earmark him for Thanksgiving 2020, Lord willing. Terry's coming of his son and lets us live that long. So that thing is scalded clean and then, you know, a little bit of bleach in there. and She's ready to roll for about anything. So I wipe down my uh, my seal and everything and, um, yeah, keep it keep it in good working order. So 618, so it's been 18 minutes, so we're good now to... Uh, finish this bird. I just took the craw out of the turkey. thought I was recording and I was not. I've just thrown it away. That sucks. But I'm going to take the camera off the tripod. I just wash my hands before I gut this bird and uh, show you a couple things. So, number one, he's a fighter. His leg. That's gangrene kind of up in that drumstick right there. Not really gangrene, but you see the green underneath the skin. And uh, his breastbone there is roughed up. What it looks like that's probably from fighting as well right there. So a couple of battle wounds. He has a broken spur. And I've already got the craw out, and I, I was filming this, and now it's over. But I cut the neck off closer. Of course, the neck's shot up from the shotgun. But the craw was up in there. It's all cleaned out. I'm going to put him in the water after I gut him. But... Uh, I showed the craw to the camera, but the camera wasn't running. There was hardly anything in it. A little bit of grass, and that was all that was in this craw. So he hasn't been eating because he's been with hens, I guess. So. lungs out right now and they are cold and that is excellent exactly what I wanted to feel he's not cooked from the inside now so I can clean all that out with the knife just like that the whole vent the anus he's clean we put him back in the ice bath let some of this blood drain out of him. All right, there's our finished turkey laying on the counter here in the kitchen. He's all dried off, clean. Any feathers on him. All nice and cleaned off. So, there's the finished product all vacuum sealed up. Forty-two in the evening. I can finally take a break. I still got to clean my shotgun. I'm taking a break. I'm gonna eat some supper.